Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. We have a special session today, and the topic is the new data inquiry feature in the Warehouse Mobile App. My name is Peggy, and I'll be your moderator today. We're broadcasting this session through Teams Live Events, and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. This session is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. When you join this event, your name, email address, and our phone number may be viewable by other session participants in the attendee list. By joining, you're agreeing to this experience. The recording will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within the coming weeks. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions throughout today's presentation, and there will be time at the end for further questions. Thank you for your patience during these announcements. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Nicole Gump, Senior Solution Architect. And moderating our Q&A, we have Ann Krupke, also Senior Solution Architect. Nicole, over to you. Thanks, Peggy, and uh, welcome everyone to our special session. Uh, we're calling it a special session because we've only got this uh, one specific feature that we're going over today. Um, it has been released into public preview, and since we're kind of in between our two major uh, wave releases for the year, uh, we wanted to make sure to cover this um, and get the information in front of the community um, before our next major wave cycle in October. So uh, we are going to cover, uh, as Peggy said, the new data inquiry feature in the warehouse management uh, mobile app today. So let's get started. As we have been doing, we have your riddle of the day. So let me reveal the question. It is, what is warehouse workers' favorite sport? Think about that. We will uh, review or reveal the answer at the end. You can also put any guesses in uh, the chat if you would like. Uh, the agenda for today is just to do a quick overview um, of this new feature. Um, I will be doing a live demo in the environment, um, and then we will have time for Q&A at the end. Um, as Peggy mentioned, Anne is helping me moderate uh, the chat, so put any questions in there, uh, but we will have time for some live uh, Q&A after the demos. Uh, so let's go over the feature. So uh, this feature is available in platform update 10.0.29. Is technically our October release. So it went into public preview on August 1st. Um, so it's available now. Um, I know some of you have already taken the uh, the preview update and, and found the documentation that we have and, and have been playing with this in, in your own environments. Um, but it will not be generally available uh, until mid September. Again, this is technically our October release for uh, Wave 2 2022. So the data inquiry flow um, has the full feature name um, of warehouse management app data inquiry flow. So when you're in your feature management workspace, uh, that is the feature name you will search for to enable this new feature. So some of the benefits that we have when we enable this feature, um, we have warehouse workers now have the ability to look up relevant data from within in the standard warehouse mobile app uh, without needing to access the back office uh, Dynamics 365 UI, as well as um, they can basically search and select records from a list. So we have this card view uh, that is shown in the screenshot on the right. So instead of having to manually enter data, um, that's just improving our speed um, and our accuracy of capturing data um, on the mobile app. So we've got some uh, feature dependencies. So as a prerequisite to enabling uh, this new feature, we've got um, a couple of features that we need to enable. One is the, the warehouse app step instructions. Uh, that feature has been out for some time, and actually as of this 10.0.29 release, the feature state will now be mandatory for the warehouse app step instructions. And the second one is the uh, warehouse management app detours. We have 
covered uh, that feature in a previous Tech Talk. Um, and as of the 10.0.29 release, the feature state for that one will be on by default. Um, so it will be enabled, but you will still have the ability to disable it if you would like. Uh, but if you do that, um, you're not able to use uh, this new feature that we're covering here today. So um, both of those features need to be enabled. Oh, sorry about that. Um, my PowerPoint skipped ahead there. Um, just one other thing I wanted to point out is that the uh, documentation links um, are in the appendix um, of this slide deck. So when the recording is published, um, you will have access to those. OK, so let's cover uh, before we go into a demo of the feature, um, a current process that we have on the warehouse uh, mobile app workflow and kind of where the gap or the pain point is um, for users today. So we're going to look at purchase order receiving. Uh, by no means is this the only process uh, that this feature could apply to. Um, it's just the one that we're going to use um, in the sample uh, scenarios. So today, uh, when a warehouse worker um, enters the mobile app to do a PO receipt, uh, the first thing that the workflow is going to ask them for is to enter the purchase order number. And even our default warehouse app step instruction um, for this step in the workflow says, find the purchase order in print or on a computer and enter the purchase order number that you want to receive. So if I'm a user, I'm working you know, on the receiving dock in a warehouse, you know, I am immediately kind of blocked in my workflow. I'm taking out of my work area and I have to go to a computer to look up that purchase order number if I haven't received uh, the paperwork from the vendor, if I don't have a, you know, a barcode value I can scan. I may even have to go to a supervisor or a manager if I don't have access to look up this information, right? So I can't even continue on um, doing my purchase order receiving workflow because I'm blocked at this first step, right? So I can't even move on and scan my items or scan my quantities that I want to receive. So that's our pain point. Um, that's been a pain point for a long time. Um, so we're glad to finally release um, this feature to you. So. Here's what it resolves. So in that purchase order receiving process with the data inquiry uh, feature enabled, I can now as a user just look up the purchase order number from the warehouse mobile app uh, that I want to receive. And that lookup, that query, that data inquiry could be any number of things, right? Basically whatever I want to configure. But some of the examples we're gonna look at today are looking up POs by vendor name, looking up POs by uh, item number that's on the PO line and purchase orders by delivery date, right? So I could look at things that are supposed to be landing at my warehouse today. So since I can just look up that purchase order information and select the purchase order I want to start receiving, I now am, remain in my work area. It's much more efficient. I didn't have to stop and walk away or go ask you know, a supervisor to look up this information for me and I can continue on now unblocked in my process to enter my items, enter my quantity. Um, so I've got a much more efficient purchase receiving process now. OK, so that's kind of the gap we're filling with this feature. So let's go to the fun stuff and actually look um, at the live environment and, and do some demos. I'm going to switch over here. Uh, this is my uh, demo environment. I'm using the Contoso data set um, as always. I'm in the USMF uh, legal entity. So I want to point out a few configurations um, that are related to this before we look at the actual demo on the mobile app. Um, that way you kind of understand the setup um, behind the feature. So once the feature is enabled, um, the first thing to know is that if you have already um, enabled the kind of prerequisite features for the um, step instructions and the detours, you still need to go in and kind of refresh that default setup uh, that's in our mobile app uh, kind of standard forms. 
and let me point out uh, which three forms specifically I'm talking about. So you're going to enable the feature in feature management, and then you're going to come in uh, to warehouse app field names. Uh, this is our one that um, defines uh, kind of the behavior right of the different input fields on the mobile app. You're going to want to create the default setup again, right, to kind of refresh this list. You're going to do the same thing for the warehouse app field priority. Uh, so again, you're just going to click that create default setup that refreshes uh, this list here that's used to kind of prioritize how fields are displayed um, in certain uh, parts of the app. And then you're also going to do the same thing for the mobile device steps. And the mobile device steps is the form that's related to that step instructions feature that's now going to be mandatory um, because this is really the framework, right, that several of our new features for the warehouse mobile app are related to. So not only the step instructions, but also some of the features we've covered previously, such as the promoted fields, the app detours, and now this data inquiry feature are all related um, to this framework. So this is um, a really critical form. So you're going to come in here. You're going to do the same thing you did for field names and field priority. You're going to click the create default setup again. Uh, that's going to refresh uh, this list and, and allow you to work with this new data inquiry feature. OK, so that's the first thing you'll want to do um, to make sure all your defaults are set. Um, and then uh, what you want to do is create any of the lookups, any of the inquiries that you want uh, the users to have access to uh, from the mobile app. So we have to create those items first and let me show you uh, what that looks like. So I'm going to scroll down. You'll see that I have a bunch of different kind of lookup functions that I've configured. Um, I'm going to click on this one. So this is lookup POs for today. So we've got the same kind of general setup for any of these data inquiries. So it's an indirect uh, mode and the activity code is data inquiry. You'll see that option uh, when you enable the feature. Um, the table name you can select. Um, if I click on the drop down here and this populates, you'll see it's any database table, right? Um, so this is really wide open. Um, it's very generic. You can configure essentially anything you want here. Um, this one is based on the purchase table. So these are my purchase order headers. Um, and what you're going to do in the edit query, once you have picked your table name, is you'll see that in the edit query, um, my criteria are now going to be related to that table that I chose. And I can put in any criteria that I want for the inquiry. Um, here I've got, you know, the purchase order should be open order. The delivery date is today uh, because that's my lookup um, that I'm doing. I don't have any criteria um, that I want the user to enter. I simply just want to run this query that says show me open purchase orders for today's date. Um, one other setup uh, that's important that's related. Um, is this field list. Um, you'll probably be familiar with this setup if you use the um, open work list on the mobile app today. So very similar, right? You're just going to select um, from the available fields um, the additional kind of data points that you want to display on that card view that's returned um, by the result of the inquiry that you're doing. So for purchase orders arriving today, you know, I've got uh, purchase number, status, delivery mode, you know, just pick several things here uh, that are related to, to display to the user on the card. So that's really it from a setup perspective. Um, I'll show you another one of these just to show how it's different. Um, this one is look up purchase orders by item. So here again, in direct, we've got the data inquiry that allows me to pick my table name. This time I'm picking the purchase order line table because I want to look up the items on the purchase order. And so in my edit query, I've got my purchase order lines. And here you can see a little bit uh, difference that I've got status. Uh, here I've got a delivery date range, right, of 10 days in the past or up to 10 days in the future. 
Um, but then I've got this blank criteria for item number. Uh, what this setup is going to do is that when I open this inquiry on the app, it's going to prompt the user for any of those criteria that are blank. So it's going to ask the user, OK, which item uh, do you want me to go retrieve the information for? And then again, uh, similarly on the field list, I've just uh, picked uh, several different fields here. You have up to eight that you can define. Of course, the more fields you select, that's just making that card uh, taller, right? So if you've got a long list, um, it's just going to take up more real estate um, on the mobile app display. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then one more thing I want to point out uh, that you can set up here as well. Let's look at the lookup POs by vendor. Again, this one's based on the purchase table because we're just look, looking at the vendor. Um, so the query, again, you'll see looking for status, uh, a delivery date range, and then this one has the criteria open for vendor name. So I'm going to prompt the user uh, to enter the vendor name they're looking for. But I've also added a sort uh, here. So this is something you can do on any of them, right? So if the cards that are being returned um, in the result, if you want to sort those uh, in any particular order, I've chosen the you know, oldest to newest delivery date, essentially. Uh, that way, if there's older POs, I want those to pop up to the top of my list. So you can add a sort. OK. So I think that's it. Um, again, field list. Uh, we've just picked a few things to display to the user here um, once the query is run. So once you've got um, all of your different lookups uh, configured, you're going to want to go add those to uh, your mobile device menu. Uh, one thing I want to point out here, you'll see that I've created um, this inquire menu that contains all of my lookups. Uh, the reason for this um, is because this data inquiry feature works again much like the open work list where if a user is looking at open work for say a transfer order uh, that needs to be picked, if they select one of those cards um, from that work list to initiate the transfer picking, um, they can only do that if they have access to a transfer picking menu item somewhere else in their menu, right? Not just within the open work list because that's just an inquiry, right? And it's just a display. So they have to have the workflow, right? The menu item available to them somewhere else on the menus. So that's why we've created this menu of all these lookups because then this is what's referenced and really used, right? By the user who selects one of those cards. Um, so I have all the lookups. Um, and then I have put that inquiry menu on my main menu so that I can access that. So we'll see, um, I'll show you on the app that you can start from any of these inquiries and then you can detour to a workflow um, or other way around, right? I could be in the workflow like I showed in that graphic and then do a lookup from a step in the workflow um, and then go back to my workflow. So that's the uh, menu item and menu setup. So um, that's kind of the heart of the data inquiry and the criteria. Now the ability to kind of bounce in and out of that data inquiry and the workflow is tied to uh, the mobile device steps that we talked about earlier. So let me filter down this list here um, because it's showing you all the, um, Anything that's not tied to a specific menu item is just kind of the generic um, step ID and uh, information that you would see for any workflow in the app. If it is tied to a menu item, we do that through the, the step configuration, then it's just specific to that combination of that menu item in that workflow and that particular step ID. So you'll see, let me click into this one here for purchase receiving. You'll see that for the PO number, again, from the graphic that we showed earlier where it says enter PO number right when you start that workflow, this is the step ID, enter purchase order number. So if I click in here, I can see the details. Um, again, this is a whole framework for um, being able to edit the step title and instructions 
And if we scroll down, you'll see we've got additional sections for the promoted fields uh, feature, as well as the app detours. And the app detours are what we're going to use to do our data inquiries. So you'll see that from my purchase receiving workflow on my purchase order number um, entry step, I've created three detours that allow me to look up the purchase order by item, by vendor, or purchase orders arriving today. Those three things I configured in my menu items. And because it's a detour, I also have the ability to send information to that lookup and or retrieve information from it. Because it's an inquiry, I don't need to send any data. I also don't really have any data. I'm in the first step of my workflow, but I do want to retrieve information, right? If I do a lookup of the purchase order by vendor, if I find the one that I want to receive, when I go back from my detour to my purchase receiving workflow, I want that detour to bring with it the purchase order number that I selected, right? It doesn't make a lot of sense for us to look that up and then ask the user to like, remember it right and type it in. Um, so we're actually going to bring the purchase order number back into the workflow. OK. So that is how the um, app detours use the data inquiry lookups to pass the information back and forth. So this is kind of the last step of the setup. Um, once you've got your menu items, your menu, you've set up the detours um, for the appropriate steps. Now you're ready to um, log into your app and see what it looks like. So let's do that. I'm going to go back to close some of these forms here. I'm going to bring up my mobile app. I'm going to log in. And let me show you um, first just that inquiry menu that I added to my main menu. You'll see it has all the different various lookups that I've configured. Um, let's go through uh, some of the ones that we talked about earlier. So if we say look up PO items, this is my one that's based on my uh, purchase order lines. Again, you can see it's it's showing me in this kind of detail or description section um, of the app any criteria that I have pre-populated in the setup. So line status is open order. Anything that I left blank in the criteria, it's going to prompt the user to enter. So it's saying, well, what purchase order, right? Um, I'm just going to enter a purchase order number that I created. And so this lookup, and again, I'm not within a workflow right now. I'm, I'm simply just doing a lookup from my app. But if I have that purchase order number, I could scan it or type it in, and it's going to show me uh, what are the purchase order items uh, that are on that PO. So I can see I've got these two items, what the quantity and, and unit are. And again, those are totally configurable. Those are just the, the fields I selected in the field list that I wanted to show displayed um, on the card view. OK, so let's look at PO uh, items. If I cancel out of that inquiry, let's look at what the lookup POs for today looks like. So this one, uh, you'll see it's different. It's got my pre-configured um, criteria for open purchase order status and today's delivery date. Um, and it's not prompting the user to scan anything here because there were no criteria that I left blank. Um, so I'm just going to confirm that and it's going to show me any purchase orders with a delivery date of today. So I can see I've got um, a couple of different purchase orders from a couple of different vendors that are open that are supposed to be arriving today. OK. And then let's look at one more. Uh, let's look at purchase orders by vendor. Um, again, you can see my pre-populated criteria here, delivery date range, uh, purchase order status and vendor name. Um, this one, I want to show you that if you're entering a vendor name or you could have done it on the purchase order item one as well, but basically we support like a wildcard search in here. So if I can't remember the full vendor name, I can just type in part of it um, and it's going to bring up for me um, any purchase orders arriving within that delivery date window with that open purchase order status that have that, you know, star parts um, in the name. So it brought up all the tailspin parts, uh, vendor POs that are open. 
And if you recall from the setup, this is the one that I put a sort um, on the oldest uh, to newest delivery date. So you can see that I've actually got um, a purchase order here that by purchase order number sequence is actually later, um, but it's got an earlier delivery date. So it's been sorted in that delivery date order. Okay, um, what I will show you from here is that, so if I've got this delivery date of today, 825 um, from this inquiry, I can long press on this card if I've configured a detour from my inquiry, again, you would do that in the app detour setup, um, that I can initiate that purchase receiving from the inquiry. Um, like we saw, it's gonna pass in um, the purchase order number that was on my card, that way I don't have to remember it, and I can just start receiving this purchase order that I looked up, right? Um, one thing I do want to point out um, is that because I started from the inquiry and I did a detour um, to this workflow, that is kind of one level of detour. Um, we can't nest detours at this point in time, right? So if I wanted to do another lookup now from this purchase receiving uh, scan item step, if I wanted to go look up all the items on the PO, I can't do that because I already did one detour to get here, um, but I will show you how you can use multiple detours within the same workflow. So a little bit confusing, but just to note uh, that you can't do multiple detours like to multiple different workflows at this point um, in time. That might be a feature enhancement we do um, at some point in the future. OK, so I'm just going to cancel out of here. You'll see that because that's a detour, it's always going to return you to the, the workflow you were in. In my case, it was just this inquiry um, of the POs by vendor. So I'm going to go ahead and back all the way out of here. And I'm actually going to back out of my inquiry menu because I want to show you as well uh, what does this look like um, if we go from the purchase receiving workflow that we showed in that graphic in the slide deck? Um, so if I'm not just doing an inquiry, if I'm actually, you know, going in to my inbound menu, I'm going to do my purchase receiving. Again, here's that step instruction, right, that I was mentioning where today it literally says, you know, go find it in print or on a computer. Uh, don't show me that again because I no longer have to do that, right? Um, if I don't know my purchase order number, I now have these detours to my lookups. The detours are, again, always indicated by that return arrow over the icon. If I select more actions, you can see that I have more than are just displaying, and that's just the size of my app uh, that I have up here. But so I can see POs for today. I can see POs by vendor. I can see POs by item, right? So maybe I'm saying, OK, just show me any POs that are arriving today. Um, it's showing me the criteria, just like we did in the inquiry, and I'm going to confirm that. I know there's going to be a question, so I'm just going to answer it now. Uh, again, this is something that, yes, you have to confirm this, even if there's not um, data for the user to input. Again, this might be something um, that we include as a feature enhancement in the future, right? If, the, if there's no data for the user to input um, and we don't want them to have that extra click or confirmation here, uh, we can you know, add in the future like an auto confirm or something like that to this step. That way the user doesn't have to see this. You know, maybe they don't really care. As soon as they um, select this detour, we just want to display the results to them. OK, but for now, yes, you have to confirm it manually. Um, so there's an extra click in there. Um, so my POs for today, again, I've got these couple of open POs from two different vendors. Um, I can select the one that I want. And again, because it's a detour, it's going to take me back to the workflow I was in. In this case, I'm already in the purchase receiving and I've told it in my um, detour setup, right, to bring back in that purchase order number that I selected on the card. So I don't have to remember it. I don't have to type it in and then I can just continue on in my workflow. Now you may notice that I'm in the scan item and I do have a detour option available to me to do another lookup for my purchase order items. So if I know the purchase order that's receiving, maybe I've got a whole bunch of different pallets with different items. Um, I just want to go ahead and receive the one that's like 
closest to me. Um, I can look up the PO items now. Um, I can do this because I'm in the same workflow, right? I'm not in a detour and then trying to go to another detour. Um, I've done one detour, but I've returned back to my original workflow. I can do another detour here, right? Um, and so here I've configured the detour to pass in the purchase order number. Um, if you remember from when we looked at the menu item setup, I left the item number blank. And when I showed you this lookup in the inquiry form, I had to type the purchase order number in to see the purchase order line items. But here I'm passing in the purchase order number from my workflow that I'm already in. Um, so it's smart enough to retrieve that data and then again show me these line items. So this should look familiar. This is the one I showed you earlier. So I can say, you know, maybe purchase order line number one is this item, but the way that the items were unloaded and, and staged on the receiving dock, maybe this one is actually closer to me and I want to start receiving uh, line two. So I'm going to click that one. And again, it's a detour. I can pass information back. So I'm going to have it pass back the item number and then I'm just going to continue on in my workflow. OK, so that would allow me to select the quantity, register the items, right? Um, so I can just move on from there. I can say oh, I've only got six of these on this pallet, um, confirm that and I'm done with my purchase receiving workflow. OK, um, that is it for our demos. Um, hopefully, um, you're as excited about this feature as we are. Like I said, it's been a long time coming for us to deliver this. Um, this has been a pain point for a long time. And again, we we only covered this purchase receiving uh, workflow example, um, but be creative, right? If you've already got uh, your wheels turning in your mind about ways you can use this um, in your implementations, put it in the chat. You know, um, we want to hear about it. Certainly, um, it's like we showed at the beginning when we were configuring the menu items, you know, you can select really any data table, put any criteria in there. It's very generic. We can tie it to any step um, of our workflows in our app with that app detour uh, framework. Um, so it's very flexible. Um, as I pointed out when I was going through the demo, there's probably a couple minor things we can do for feature enhancements like the auto confirmation or maybe allowing multiple steps of, of detours, but um, it, it's pretty exciting. Um, and that's why, again, we're doing this special session today to get the information out uh, to you and in front of you um, before we get to October. So let me go back um, to the slide deck and I'm going to ask Anne, are there any questions in the chat I can answer live? We have a lot of questions. All so. right. Well, good thing is we <laughs> have plenty of time. We have time. OK, the first question, um, it looks like somebody's already been trying to test out this feature. Mm -hmm. They tried to return a quantity into the purchase order item receiving from uh, the purchase order item receiving flow. So the, the detour was look up the purchase order and return the quantity of that PO line. Um, but it's it seems that there were issues with the decimals and there's a Yammer post about it. Do we are you aware of this issue um, or the status, Nicole? Um, no, but you can put the Yammer thread uh, in the chat and we can follow up on it. Uh, one thing I will say, um, I know this community is very active. We've got the warehouse management app uh, specific Yammer group and our engineering team um, is very active there as well as far as responding to posts. Um, so that's always a good place to start if you're testing something out and you're having an issue. Um, I I'm not aware of any decimal quantity issue with this detour functionality, but yeah, we can follow up on it. Yeah, the the uh, question asker did provide the, the okay. link so we can follow up with that. Yep. OK, the next question is, is this new feature going to let the app display more than 13 records when users do inquiries without going to the computer? Um, this setup unlike your work list uh, does not have and maybe let me jump back to the environment um, it doesn't have so one thing you'll notice if I just pick one of these um, 
is that there isn't the like number of records to display a type of parameter there that there is like there is on the work list, right? So um, I haven't personally tested um, this with like, you know, if there's 50 open purchase orders that would be returned by that criteria, you know, what is that card view going to look like? How much does it scroll? Is there a cutoff? Uh, but we can certainly follow up um, with engineering um, to see if there is a like a threshold um, on the display. Obviously, part of it's going to be your actual device that you're running the app on, um, you know, and just how large it is and, and how those cards display. And again, how many um, things that you're putting in the field list, um, because that just makes the cards larger. Um, so I would say test it. Um, I'm not aware of a limit because we didn't actually put a parameter on it like we did for the open work list. And it's something we can follow up with engineering if they know that if there's a threshold or not. Great. Our next question is uh, by default, are the POs or I suppose any records that are returned by the lookup, are they displayed only for the warehouse that the warehouse operator is logged into? Um, they should be, yes, because that's kind of our default assumption for everything on the mobile app, right? Um, is that their user is logged into a specific warehouse. Um, but again, I haven't actually tested it. So if the PO is for another warehouse and it meets that criteria, does it show up in the app? Interesting test. Um, let us know yep. if you do test that. And for some reason, it is not filtering out by the user's uh, warehouse, but it should. There is a follow up question as well that asks, what if the checkbox on the site is yes to allow receipt at other warehouses? Um, this feature shouldn't affect that, right? So if that's working, right? Like if you have that configured and uh, somebody's logged into, you know, our default warehouse here is the 24 uh, WMS enabled warehouse, but we allow them to receive at warehouse 51. Um, they can still do that. Uh, this data inquiry doesn't impact that functionality. Okay. And just to confirm, the PO records that are displayed in the mobile device do not require the warehouse user to have permissions as a user in the main Dynamics client. Is that correct? Like permission so, to view purchase orders? Right. No, no. OK. What about um, in the query, are table joins supported? So if you have two date, two tables that you need to query to get information. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yes, they are. You can, so you can join other tables here. OK, and what if we need to um, return information from one of the joined tables will that show up in the in the option for what data we're trying to return um the available fields on the app detours are not tied to like the data table you're selecting here and the criteria they're tied to the available fields in the workflow um so like you can't return a quantity if there's no quantity or you know um let me go back to that form and show you what I mean. Um, let me filter again by these. Um, so if we look at this was the um, detour from the item ID where it asked me within that purchase receiving flow to scan my item and I have the detour to look up the PO items. So let's look at this one. So if I scroll down, I just I just have that single detour to look up the items. Um, so when I go into this form, select fields to send and receive back, um, these options are just tied to the available fields in the workflow. They are not tied to the data inquiry. What about the bring back field? Because those are the nope. send fields, right? No. Nope. Okay. Same. Like you can't you can't retrieve like information and don't have anywhere to put it, right? Like you're looking up information for that input field, right? I'm in a step that says scan the item ID. So I'm going to go look up the purchase order items. I want to bring back the item ID. I'm not going to bring back a quantity 
into an item ID field, right? And that right. might be an issue that somebody had earlier with the quantity, right? You need to make sure that you're bringing that back into the right step of the workflow when it's asking you for that input. Okay, you can't skip around. Um, now, if you have, um, this would be a bad example because I'm looking up the PO number and I'm returning it. But if I was just in this step of the workflow and I'm not using a detour to look up the item and I scan like a GS1 barcode, it can parse out item number, quantity, unit, all of that, right? That shouldn't be an issue, but I'm not okay. using the detour to do that. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, actually, on the topic of barcode scanning, we have a question that asks, when do you plan to release the QR code scanning functionality in the new mobile app? Uh, you should be able to scan QR codes today, but it's not related to this feature. Okay. Um, if there's a specific, like if somebody has an issue where they can't scan QR codes, let us know. But you can, I mean, we support scanning barcodes, QR codes, whatever, with um, like a device camera app now. Um, so that shouldn't be a restriction at this point in time. Okay. The next question are there are the eight display fields extensible can you have more than eight on a card um short sure. um if you want to extend that uh field list in the setup um you can add more again i would just caution right the more the more you add here right if you've got like a dozen fields you're displaying to the user i would argue are all of those really important for the user to select the value that they need. And also it's making the card larger, it's potentially you know, limiting the number of cards you're gonna see on the return. Uh, so just keep those things in mind. Okay. The next question, I do think you answered this, but I just wanna make sure, um, mm -hmm. can, can you skip, skip the criteria page and just show the records corresponding to the filter directly? No, and that that's where I said I, I know that question's going to come up, right? Um, let me back out of here. So this would be on an example, right, where we're looking up um, if our data inquiry has uh, no criteria that the user needs to enter, right? Let me show you that corresponding one over here. Look up, this is look up POs for today. So if I look at that query, right, in my setup, it, it has a uh, predefined criteria and it has no blank criteria, meaning nothing I'm going to ask the user for. You can see that here, right? It's just saying check values and confirm. I do have to manually confirm that today. Again, it might be something that we introduce as a feature enhancement to this data inquiry feature later on, where you can kind of auto confirm this if there's nothing for the user to input. Um, that way they just see the cards as soon as they click the the detour or the inquiry button, but today you do have to click it. Sorry. Okay. We have our next question is, it looks like there is now no lookup possibility for the second item. Not sure what that's asking. Um, if you complete this workflow, the purchase receive workflow once, and you go back to the beginning, you would have to do the lookup again as well, right? So if, um, you, if you did the PO receive, you did the lookup to find the right PO, then you received get that item. If there was a second line on that purchase order, you would have to go through the entire process again? Yeah, I know what they're saying. Um, so like this purchase order, if we say look up PO by vendor or whatever, right? We can put in whatever that one was with the office. That's this one. Um, if we receive uh, something here, let's pick a, we'll pick this item. What they're saying is, so let's say I receive 12 of these. Okay, um, all of that looks good. If I register that in, they're saying right when I come back here. Um, so the workflow is behaving like it does with no detours or whatever, where you're still in the same PO, right? I'm still in this one, um, but it's asking me to scan the next item and I don't have the lookup available. That's that limitation with like um, the multiple detours, I guess we can call it, um, but we're aware of this, right? This one I think is um, 
one we would address um, maybe before some of the other um, kind of nice to have feature enhancements, because this does then kind of block you, even though I have it configured um, because I've already done it once, I now don't have it available again. So we're aware of this from the preview testing. And again, this is still in preview. Um, so if you find things like this in your testing, please um, log them, put them in Yammer, uh, log them in the um, preview feedback form um, so that our engineering teams can address this before the general availability date. And just um, since the question came up in the chat again, the version that this is available in preview is 10.0.29. Yes, which went into um, should be in the LCS shared asset library as of the beginning of this month, August 1st, it was there. Right. OK, lots of questions still. Um, is this feature also applicable to production orders? How about that one? Um, I guess we'll answer this just like we did yesterday um, in our session yesterday somebody has asked about like returns and transfer orders right so yes right you could um, have a data inquiry that's based on like the production order table right if we're looking for that um, so yeah the, I, again this is very generic you can base it on any table you can make the query whatever you want so you could have a lookup uh, for production orders and and put that um, in a workflow for the raw material picking or report is or finished. yeah whatever mm -hmm. you would need it for yep mm -hmm. right what about here's a here's a really good question um in the in the lookup if we're looking up an item on a purchase order can we search for the item by the vendor item number um you mean within like if we're looking at this one? I believe so, yes. Uh, yes, if you put that criteria in your query, right? So instead of having the item number here, if you have like an external item ID or something like that, that has the vendor item number, um, you could make that the criteria. I wouldn't see why not. But test it as always. OK. Um, we have a question regarding picking. Do you know if it's possible to filter on delivery methods for the sales order for the warehouse worker to prioritize what to pick first at the warehouse if the carrier, for example, is delivering the sales order to the customer today? Um, that's not so much a lookup as it is like a work list, uh, right? So when we're talking about sales order picking, you've already like, release these orders uh, to the warehouse for picking. You've got sales order picking work that's been created. That's more what the display open work list is for uh, to show the user everything that needs to be picked. Um, you can filter or group these. You've got the same kind of functionality, right? You could use the edit query to put in a, you know, a delivery mode, right? Um, you can use the load or you could do a join to the, the sales order, right? And then you can put sorting on this as well. So if you wanna sort it by, you know, certain delivery date mode priority, you know, whatever fields you have in here, right? Uh, you could do that, but I would say use the work list for that. That's not necessarily an inquiry. Okay. Um. We have another, we do have someone responded in the chat that the limit, the limit on the number of records to show does exist. It's a hundred. Um, okay. So the query to know. filter should be less than that. The query supports joins, but it's existing joins, not inner joins. Fields need to be from the main table mm -hmm. on Detour as it is implemented now and will be available in one of the coming releases. Is that Banya? Yes. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Banya. This was his baby. He uh, worked on this before he uh, left our supply chain engineering team to uh, help out the sustainability team. So uh, he's very close to this, and, and thank you for answering that in the chat. Okay. Um, if we have already see received a partial purchase order quantity, will the mobile app show the remaining quantity left to receive? 
Um, yes, that's not affected by this detour, right? Um, let's see, what, oh, now I gotta remember one that I already, what's the one I just went through? Uh, I'll show you here. Um, so I've got this one, that's my purchase order. I think I did a receipt on this one before. Um, or I don't remember which item, maybe this one. Not showing me the quantity there. It did not show on the card, although that could be either I picked the wrong one or it's um, dependent on not the query, but the field list. Um, purchase quantity is what I'm displaying. So you could look for if there's a different um, quantity field uh, in here. So, you know, you could pick um, a different quantity that would show you like remaining quantity versus purchase quantity, which is the one I had on there. So, yes, but um, my card did not because I'm only displaying purchase quantity. Hopefully, okay. that was, hopefully that was the question. Yes, I know it's zero quantity, not valid. OK, uh, anything else? Yes. Um, OK. Can, can multiple receipts be done from the lookup without going to just one item or PO to receive? Multiple receipts be done from the lookup, like from here? Um, I'm not sure if they mean like initiating it from the inquiry. If that is what you mean, um, good question. Maybe it's a good time to look at how this detour differs, um, right? Because I showed you um, the lookup POs by vendor from here, right? So if I put in um, my vendor name, right? Just show you the wild cards work in any way. Um, I have all these different POs. Yes, I could, right? Like initiate my purchase receive detour from here do my receipt, even if I just cancel out, it's gonna bring me back here, right? If this is totally received, this this might disappear, right? Because it would no longer be open order status. I can continue to receive these other POs from this inquiry. But let me show you how the setup of that detour looks differently. And this is one of the reasons why we said at the very beginning, when you enable the feature, make sure you refresh the default setup um, because what this looks like, um, is that you now have this generic data inquiry step um, in this uh, mobile device step uh, list form. And this would not be here. You wouldn't see this if you don't refresh your default. Um, but this is the step ID for the inquiry. So if I'm starting from that inquiry menu and not from within like a purchase workflow or, or whatever other workflow, um, then this is the one I want to hang my detour off of. So you can see I've got uh, from my lookup POs by vendor, I've got a detour to do my purchase receiving. So this is kind of the inverse, right, um, of what we were looking at from the workflow side. So I do my detour to my purchase receiving. I'm saying send that purchase order number from the inquiry to the purchase receiving workflow. I'm not bringing anything back because when it returns me, I'm just going back to the, the resulting uh, cards that list view uh, from the inquiry. So hopefully that makes sense about how that's uh, different. We didn't show this specifically in the setup, but it's a good note to call out. And as we as we're talking through the setup in Dynamics, could you just take a minute to walk through the menu paths for the new any of the new forms or setups that have been added? There are none. There are um, none. They're all part of. <laughs> yeah, essentially all the setup forms, but I will um, show you they're already existing, right? So we talked about a few um, from warehouse management setup. Um, everything's under your mobile device. Uh, the three forms that we've really been uh, talking about were, we did show the warehouse app field names and field priority. That's just to refresh the default setup, as well as in the mobile device steps. That's the one I was just in. Uh, but that's not a new form, right? That's introduced with the step instructions feature that's now mandatory in this release. Um, your other main one is this mobile device, you know, menus and menu items. 
I'd say the two main forms you're going to be working in are the, the menu items and then the steps as far as this data inquiry feature. Um, in the menu items, I guess um, the only new field uh, technically would be this table name field that is available when you um, select the data inquiry activity code. Uh, because we don't have that right, that's like not available on any other mobile device um, menu items set up with any other activity code. So technically that's a new field, but on this existing form, so. Great. Um, we had, so fo following up to the question about the using a table join to look up multiple tables, Mm -hmm. In the in the fields that we can show on the card, is that is that restricted to the main table that you look up, or can you include fields from the join table? Um, you mean here? So when you get into the field list, it is based on that same main table that you selected. I'm gonna guess based on Vanya's earlier response um, that this has to be from the main table as well, but go ahead and test it or he can comment in the chat if I'm wrong. Um, like if you do a table join, are you able to then um, select any of the fields from that join table as well? Okay. Um, and then as far as the, the setup, do we have any plans to add this functionality set uh, the demo data to the Contozo demo data? Do we know? Oh, I don't know. Um, good question. I can follow up uh, with the team that owns this now um, because we the demo data doesn't actually have any of these newer features in the demo data set, right? Like the uh, step instructions, the promoted fields, the detours, the data inquiry, like all of those, um, what we're calling the modern warehouse mobile app, right? The blue and white uh, screen, all the features that we're developing uh, for that, I don't believe are in the Contoso data set yet, but I can um, certainly follow up on that as a takeaway. Okay. And just to confirm for a question in the chat, if we turn on the feature that allows us to use this functionality, it doesn't require, if you aren't ready to use it yet, but you turn the feature on, it's not going to change anything about the way that your current setup works. Is that correct? Right, yep. All it's really doing when you enable it is it's giving you this additional uh, data inquiry activity code in your mobile device menu item setup. If you choose not to set up any items, it, it's not um, a breaking change for any existing mobile app functionality. Great. OK, um, when it comes to oh, a, a follow up comment when we talked about looking at the remaining quantity on a PO line, mm -hmm. uh, the there is a, a comment that the registered quantity is not always the same as the remaining quantity. Um, so if if it's only been registered and not received, then the PO line may not have updated the remaining quantity to reflect the registered amount. So that could be a potential limitation. Does that is that true? Um, I again, I would test it. There were several different quantity fields that we briefly looked at in here. Um, so if there isn't one available that displays the remaining quantity that you're expecting, let us know. Yeah. I just haven't tested it personally. OK. OK, it looks like um, per this uh, commenters testing, they weren't able to see that um, okay. right now. Is it possible to set up a dis to display a range of items or vendors or other in the query? For example, item number one through ten. Um. I suppose, I mean, are you saying to, I mean, we're kind of showing that with the range for like delivery date. So yes, it, it depends on, I would say it wouldn't make sense. The reason I hesitate is because if you're like looking up PO items, I guess, are they trying to limit the results that are displayed? Um, maybe is more the question. Like if there's a thousand lines on a PO and I only want to see, you know, line numbers one through 10, then I suppose you could put that in the criteria as a range, right? Okay. I, I wouldn't see why you couldn't try that, yeah. 
OK, our next question is, how do you know what the step ID is for each step? And can you add translations for step instructions or unique text? Yes, mm -hmm. um, we can. Or I, I'll, uh, maybe somebody can put in the chat. Maybe Peggy can help us with it. There's existing tech talks. They're all in this series um, for supply chain. Um, we have done a couple that cover um, all of these uh, features, starting with the step instructions that cover, um, you know, you may not know the specific ID name, so I would usually filter by maybe the title um, and use the contains filter, right? So if you know that it says item or something, but you don't know exactly what, you can see that we have some, we've got item ID, but we've also got a, a disposition, uh, we've got a product confirmation for items. So that's just a confirmation step, not the original scan. So you may be able to find the particular step ID just by filtering here. But to the second part of that question, yes, if I go into this um, item, you can see all the available languages, right? Um, I can filter on um, my English US language to see the title and instruction. And then I can go in, uh, and this is covered again in that earlier tech talk, and I know we're right at or a minute over time, but you can come in here, you'll see all of the translations um, or any you know things that you've customized, right? I can put in here. Test, test. And, and that's going to show up, right? And, and we've demoed that in previous tech talks. So those are out there on our community dynamics page already, if you're curious in some of these other features that are related to what we talked about today. And there yeah, might be more questions. We're yeah. out of time though. <laughs> yeah. I will link the tech talk series in the chat, um, sure. but Thanks. let's give it back to Peggy to wrap it up. Yeah, right, let me. Good. Sorry, Peggy, I'm going to not leave the people hanging. Um, and reveal our riddle answer. Uh, so our question was, what is the warehouse uh, worker's favorite sport? And it is boxing. Ha ha ha. OK, and then I promised you in the appendix, there's the reference links. Uh, these are for kind of the feature information, more the release uh, note description. And then this one for the query data is the main one that has all the, the setup, the feature enablement, uh, the examples um, that we walk through. So um, please uh, reference that if you're testing this on your own. And as always, reach out to me. Um, and Peggy, the, the floor is yours. All right. I did go ahead and post the link to where the recordings of the previous tech talks um, are on the web so that link is there so if all the attendees could have a look in the chat i've also posted a link to a short survey um, we'd love your feedback on today's session and hear what you'd like to see in future events thank you so much for your participation there um, and again as a reminder the recording of today's session will be available on the tech talks community dynamics page the link is in the chat and big thank you to our presenters and our audience for joining today have a great day or evening wherever you are